We've arrived at Taroom in sunny southeast Queensland. We're here to visit with Beck and Rick Knutson. We'll see us there. Hi, I'm Cassie Ryan and welcome to Inside Rodeo, brought to you from the Australian Rodeo Heritage Centre. In our feature story tonight, we meet up with rodeo horse breeders Rick and Beck Knutson. But first up, with the National Finals Rodeo just two months away, Sophie Amos has a look at the contenders for the 2014 Bull Riding Championship. Over to you, Sophie. Thanks, Cassie. All of the bull riders in the country are competing to have their name on this board. This year, the bull riding comp looks set to come down to a battle between past and present champions, Fraser Babington and Rhys Angland. Outside. We wish him well. He knows the outside, Colomina, Fraser, Babington, New Zealand. Rhys has experienced the highs and lows of NFR. We've dug through the APRA archives to find this interview with Rhys. It's a lot of money and there's a lot of good guys and, you know, just at home you're kind of a lot more relaxed and stuff, but here the lights and the crowd and, you know, you get pumped up and it, it gets you going, like you got to just stay focused and that's where you, your head game comes into it. It is going to be his night. He wants to get out and be better than 87 to be in the lead. Let's get it cracking. Gold Coast, let's get behind this man, renegade Reese England. Hey! Oh yeah, come on Reese! both ways, back! Just get that feeling in you, you all your hair starts standing up and you get the big adrenaline comes on and you just want to ride at 150%, you know, like, you know, you're going to do it and that's it. Guys like Brad Pearce and, and Reese Anglin like that, they are the new generation of bull riders and, and you know, we're going to have some world champions again pretty soon. This international competition, that's really what I think is going to make the bull riding better and better. Them bulls, they know their job, they're not, you know, they're cranky, but because it's bred into them to be cranky, you know, from their daddies and all that, you know, you got to have that fire in them. And they know their job, they go out and buck and, you know, them contractors, that's all they do. They love them bulls and they feed them every day and, you know, out the backyard, you can walk out with a bucket of feed and pat half them bulls, you know, they're quiet. But when they run in them chutes, they know their job. Strap yourselves in, we've got the best seat in the house for you and the bull ride. We're here for the final round, and it's the man who was in the spotlight rounds one and two. Your winner in those rounds, Reese Anglin, who'll get us away in the first of the bull ride, and he's on one mean, cranky bit of beef. Well, have a look at those scores. 87 in round one, 81 in round two, 81 in round four. Have a look at the style of this cowboy tonight. Oh, here we go. Reese Anglin, he's in trouble. He's come off and being ragdolled by this big, ranging bull. Get out of there, son. The safety clowns get in there to try and separate beast from cowboy. Reese Anglin, he's just happy to be up and walking away. Well, Rubbing I... the legs, Reece. Oh, it's not over yet. He's got to jump out of the ring. This bull still wants a piece of him. This is action of plenty. I tell you what, this is round number five of the national finals 4X Gold Rodeo. This is incredible. Have a oh, look at that. That has got to hurt. Ragdolled Lucky he wasn't even there. Jim, I'm feeling the pain from here, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I've got a funny feeling this may confirm your retirement from the sport. He just caught the back of that beast fully on the body. As an old saying goes, it's not if you get hurt, it's when and how bad. And you know, there's, you're going to get hurt down the road somewhere and you just, what well, you got to live with it, you got to get on, you get hurt, you get over it and you go again. The outside, we wish him well, Reese Anglin. Yeah, come on, Reesey boy. Yeah. I will check to see if we got a qualified ride. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause? Current bull riding champion of Australia, Reese Anglin. The 
for your chance to see Reese in action and his attempt to reclaim his national title at the NFR in Caboolture this May, visit qsec.com.au to purchase your tickets. Adult prices start from just $25, so get in quick to avoid disappointment. After the break, Gary Amos heads to Taroom in southeast Queensland to visit with rodeo horse breeders Rick and Beck Knutson. Rick and Rebecca Knutson, you're watching Inside Rodeo. See you down the road. Hi, I'm Beck Knutson. Welcome to Iluka. We've been here at Iluka for about 13 years. It's a Santa Gertrudis property owned by Rick's parents, Wayne and Margaret Knutson. Um, we have some really nice imported horses here as well. We have two Sprint Stallions and a Bucking Horse Stallion from Harry Vole Bucking Horse Company in the States. Um, my dad also lives here, Frank Green, and trains his horses out of here and helps us. He's a huge part of what we do with our horses. And Rick's parents help us with the cattle and, and Rick manages the cattle here and takes care of his bucking horses whilst I just take care of little children, Rory and Ruby, and take care of breeding horses with um, Mojo and Hank, our two imported stallions. A typical day here starts very early in the morning. Rick gives me the opportunity to go for a run, which is um, extremely important and vital to me really because um, it keeps me physically strong to be able to ride my barrel horses which might look easy but it's quite tricky and and if you're not naturally talented it's you've got to make yourself be talented and that's part of how I do it. Later on in the morning we'll get out and, and do the vet care for all of the horses. There's so many horses here somebody always needs attention. It's like working in a hospital raising babies. Next week, mid next week. So all these mares, you've rebred them now? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, they're all involved to seductive fame. All except for maybe one is involved and she just hasn't been bred yet. She's not ready. Okay. Yeah. That's a stallion that imported a horse from America. Yes. Stallion two years ago, two and a half years ago from America by Sun Devil out of Big Valley. Right. Sun Devil went to the NFR four times, Big Valley went to the NFR ten times, and Painted Valley, which is a horse out of Big Valley, won Saddle Bronc of the Year last year. Okay, good stuff. And so my horse is a half brother to the Bucking Horse of the Year in America in the PRCA. Rick, I understand these are your two-year-olds. Yeah, these are the first crop. So they're all by Devil Valley? 17 here, they're all by Devil Valley, out of bred mares. Right. Bred horses, meaning ones that have been to rodeos and performed horses. I got some mares off Gill Brothers Rodeo and Gary yeah. McPhee and collected a few of my own. Thoroughbreds, Appaloosas, ones that I'd bucked and took to rodeo. Yeah, I see that uh... I see they've all got that little bit of feather taken after their dad. Yeah, no, they've all, they're all going to be heavy horses, I think. Yes. A lot of horsepower, hopefully. Well, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? That's right. And with the feeding that you're giving them and, and the upkeep that you give with them, it sounds like that they're going to be top bucking stock for the future. Well, hopefully they're on the road to being a good mob of horses for the cowboys to get on and win some money. Yeah. And being homebred like they are, they're going to end up, they're going to be quiet bucking horses, aren't they? 
Yeah, the days of the wild bucking horses are gone, I think, but the cowboys of today. These horses are bred, they've been handled since they're foals. Yeah. They're all a pleasure to deal with. They've been, been on feed all their life, really, so they're quiet and well-mannered. It's Thursday afternoon and it's rodeo time. So we'll see you all at the shoots. Yes, we're here talking with uh, Frank Green at the moment. He's giving Joshua Smith, a young rider from, from Roma, a bit of tuition. It's one of his first rides. From about here on out, all we can do is open the gate and just see how this young man goes. And then nods for the gate and he's ready to go. Let's see how he goes. How you feeling, buddy? You just winded? Yeah. How long have you been riding, Nick? Three years. Three or four years. Yeah. Four years. He said ride, and he didn't say getting on him. Like you can, cowboy. Good base, okay? Start, dig. Come on, dig. Okay, dig a hay here in the chute. He's got his hand in, he's just pull, pulled his glove up. He's getting, getting up on his horse here. And the gate's open, and here he goes. There's a dig a hay. He's, he's look, what, what you call like an up and coming rookie, yep. barrack rider. And um, like they go through the rookie ranks before they become into, into the open ranks. Okay. And. Uh, He's just started to win money now, like he's been riding three or four years. All right. That's what these knots are for. Yeah, mate, yeah. Yeah. You know, to, to get these guys improving and, and going ahead. Go on! Go on! He's on his third ride for the night. My dad, Frank Green, moved here about four years ago when um, it took me forever to talk him into doing it, but finally we got him here and it's the best thing that ever happened to us because he has just a, a wealth of knowledge and so much natural talent. And dad, especially with the horses, he's won so many things. I really couldn't tell you how many things or what they are. Um, we're just real proud of him for just being here and, and being a talent. And he's a wonderful grandfather for our children. And um, every day he spends a little bit of time with Rory and teaches her little things with the horses and, and instills a passion in her, just the same as what he did with me when I was tiny. And, Oh, with Dad being here, it's a great experience for us because he's very keen on teaching horses to do tricks and all kinds of animals really and um, we've learnt lots from him about that and often he'll come along to the shows that we're going to, the rodeos, and um, put on a performance um, by request and we have had an opportunity to work in a couple of nice movies with him and um, that's been a great experience. 
Oh, hello. Well, this is Bucky. He's a 13 year old gelding. He was on Movie Australia. He was the uh, Jack Thompson's horse in Movie Australia. And while we we're on the movie, we taught him a few little tricks because we got a bit bored during the day. One is, <clears throat> he's like having a four legged large dog. Oh boy, bit hard on the hat. The two stallions that belong to me are SLR Mojo's Working and Seductive Fame and they're beautiful stallions by Dash to Fame. They're both imported from America. Um, Mojo is a little bit older, he's nearly seven years old so he's had a bit more time to prove himself and we have a really good relationship. He has been successful in several different events. I've shown him in halter classes and he's been a champion and a supreme champion at the agricultural shows and he has been in working stock horse classes with my dad and he's also been up to Mount Isa to go in the Mailman Express which he did really well in. He had never been raced before. Mojo. Here he goes. Here comes Mojo. Has he got his Mojo on for the second time in the night? Oh, Rebecca man. Knudsen, let's go. This horse has got some speed. He's screaming down the course. Rips it through. Look at that boom. 54 under head of what a sizzling run. And he did break the track record up there at Mount Isa and, and won it in a completely um, shorter second bracket than everybody else that competed in the event. Um, there's a great team of people that work here together at Iluca to make us successful and, and hopefully more successful in the future. We have a wonderful group of vets in town that come out here and take care of our horses and we have an excellent nutritionist and um, it's been a huge part of um, the success of my mares especially with their pregnancies and, and just beautiful foals being born on the ground. Um, I've been uh, working for Rick and Rebecca now for 12 months organising their feed supplements. There are uh, a huge range of horse feeds on the market, commercial bulk produced horse feeds on the market. They're yes. not generic. We're in an area that has specific issues. Rebecca's had the, the good sense to create a feed that suits her purposes and it suits her horse's requirements. That way she's getting better reproduction results. Because if you keep your mares in the right condition, you have better, you have more pregnancies. They carry their foals through. The foals are born in a better state, and they grow out better. Our stallions are available to the public, and we're really proud and excited to share them with everybody. And we would love as many people as possible to come and and enjoy a mojo or a seductive fame foal, or even breed yourself a bucking horse if you want to. We've got some really good ones here. Um, and also my dad trains out of this property and, and does a wonderful job. So if you need a horse broken in or trained, he'd be more than happy to do it. You can contact us at Frank Green Horse Training on Facebook or Rebecca Knutson Bow Racing Horses on Facebook also. We are Rick and Rebecca Knutson. Thank you very much for spending some time with us at iLuca. That's it for this month. If you've missed a previous episode, you can visit prorodeo.com.au to catch up. We leave you tonight with action from past national finals and don't forget to secure your tickets for the NFR in Caboolture this May. See you next time on Inside Rodeo. Clean on a rodeo raid from Gisborne, New Zealand. I'm on the ball called Fright Night, a John Gillen Sons ball. Fright night, a bowl that would send a shiver down your spine like a Venetian blind. Cow 
cowboy who holds the Australian record in bull riding of a massive 93 points. 2012 Warwick winner. Razor Babington doesn't like to work. He's a bull rider. When everybody's going to work at 9am on signing on, you won't see this man. Why do they do it? It's been asked before. Fraser Babington's one of those cowboys, too lazy to work, too nervous to steal. Simply wants to be a bull rider. On a bull, that'll get higher than an imbin hippie when that gate cracks. A bull that's got more kick than magic mushrooms.